Greetings, Internet! I am Ken from the Computer Clan, here today to give a little demo of Windows 1.01, kind of as a celebration of Windows 10 being released recently. So, let's take off the extra zero and go back to the beginning. So, right now I am in an MS-DOS system. Windows back in this time was referred to as an operating environment, which was originally going to be called Interface Manager. It was an operating environment because the system itself was really MS-DOS. Windows was more of the graphical end of everything. It's not quite like that now, but in 1985 it was. So this is actually a fully functioning DOS system. It's running 3.3, and if I type in Win, it loads me into the environment. So this is the way Windows 1.01 looked. This is the MS-DOS executive. It is the equivalent of the modern day Explorer, which is the file browser that basically manages our icons on the desktop, uh, where our files are. It lets us open up Windows and get to our files. That's what the MS-DOS executive was. This was like the main head honcho of the system. And if I were to close it down, it would actually end the Windows session. So everything was basically running on top of this. If you close it, it's basically your shutdown command. So I'll actually show that. So you can close your session by hitting close in the window menu. Notice there's no like X minus minimize exit buttons, whatever. But there's this menu here, which is kind of like clicking on the icons in the corners of Windows today. And if I double click it, I can trigger a close command or I can click and hold and get to a menu. And if I hit close, that actually brings me right back to the MS-DOS prompt. So if I type in win, I can get right back in. So those are some basics as to how the system functions. We are in the A drive right now, and these are the files. Text files, font files, executables, you name it. Our menu bar is up here. We have some similar looking commands like run. That's something we do today on Windows 10 even. Rename, print, delete, get info. A lot of those things kind of stay the same. They obviously look different nowadays, but similar names for things. Views, we can organize by date, size, kind. We can look at programs only, or we can look at all of our files. We can have the long list information here, like it shows the dates and the times and everything. I kind of like to just make it shorter though. And the special menu. We can end the session from here, create directories, format disks, good stuff. So let's take a look at a document here. DOC, that's a file extension most of us are familiar with still, right? If you double click it, it opens it up and this is Windows Write. I believe if I go here, I can go to the About menu. This is Microsoft Windows Write, version one, 1985. Pretty crazy, huh? So I can actually scroll through this. I can use the arrows, I can drag the little elevator here and I can actually look at this document here. And the menus change in each different window. So you'll notice there's a little floppy disk down here. That's the icon for the MS-DOS executive. This system predates the taskbar, but multitasking was still possible. So watch this. If I double click the icon, I get a snap interface, kind of like what we have today. The only big difference is we actually can't move around the windows. We can't layer them like we can on a modern system. But snapping was still there. That's kind of cool how that existed actually way back then. <laughs> so. I can take these windows and I can drag to resize them and change the snap. Seem familiar? So I can do, I can kind of, it's uh, not letting me drag it there, but that's all right. Uh, I can double click to maximize. I can switch apps again, just like that. Let's say I want to maximize something else like the MS-DOS executive. Then the icon changes into the Windows right icon. So multitasking is still very possible. Let's open up some more apps like the calculator. And let's open up the calendar as well. So now you'll see we're starting to populate the bar down here with even more icons. And we can actually have all these apps up at once, which can be a little cluttery because we're running this at such a low resolution. But I can still maximize individual apps whenever I want and go ahead and use them. So now I'm in my calendar. Let's see, uh, 2 o'clock. Let's say I got a meeting with uh, G-Man. That's important. Uh, 3 o'clock, uh, we'll get a late lunch. And, uh, geez, 5 o'clock, I should probably upgrade to Windows 10. It's about time. I've been on this thing for so long. Yikes. So, I'm going to save that. And these were the save boxes. Pretty simple. But you couldn't browse your file system. You had to actually know the paths. But I'm saving everything in the root. So, I'm just going to save it as uh, my cal. And smack the save button. 
So now there it is up there, mycal.cal. So now I'm back in the MS-DOS executive and you'll see there's my file that I just saved. I can open that up and there's my calendar. So let's see if I, did I scroll down here? Where was it? Was it up? It was probably up. There it is. There's my meetings, my super important stuff. So that's really cool. Let's try that with another document. So let's go back to the MS-DOS executive and open up write. So this was Windows write. We were in this earlier. I could say lorem ipsum dolor sit amet. Uh, this is my thesis for college. If I don't get this right, I am in big trouble. I really need to graduate from drama school. It's been eight years. So I can change some characters up here too, like let's say eight years. I really want to emphasize my pain for this. I can bold that sucker. Look at that. That's beautiful. So um, I'm done. Let's go save this thing. We'll call this um, thesis. We'll save it in the A drive. So now back in the MS-DOS executive, we'll see that I have thesis.doc. So I can open that up and continue working anytime I need to. Another thing you may notice is all of these uh, file names don't exceed eight letters. That's because the allocation for the file names didn't allow anything more than eight letters. In fact, let's try creating a directory with more than eight letters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. See that? The nine didn't go in there. The addressing doesn't work that way. We can only have up to eight characters per item in this uh, list here. In fact, you'll notice even on a current Windows system, a lot of the system files still follow this rule. All right, let's take a look at Steve Ballmer's favorite. Reversi! Can you believe it? Yes, Reversi is in here. He wasn't just making that up. It's a real thing. Uh, let's do master. Oh, yeah, I'm a master at Reversi, but I need a hint. Okay, let's go there. I really don't know how to play this game, <laughs> but it's in here. Um, I, I really don't know what I'm doing, but... It is there, so that's pretty cool. Reversi is in there. They advertise that correctly. Let's take a look at Paint. Ah, everybody loves MS Paint, right? Here's what the first version looked like. Circles are cool. Oh, that actually is cool. It draws out from the center. I actually didn't know that. And as you can see, we're applying our, our brick texture there. Let's see if we can change that. Let's go to our patterns again. Maybe get like this kind of brick texture. Be like, yeah, what kind of what kind of walls do you want in your house? We got a couple different options here, huh? You got this one, that one, you get the idea. So that's a quick look at paint. <laughs> All right, we will not save changes. Let's take a look at customization. That's one thing Microsoft has always pretty much had in their system. <laughs> so if we go to control.exe, this is our control panel, double click it, we get all of our settings here. Date and time, cursor settings, we have installation options, configuring printers, fonts, connections, communication ports, and my personal favorite, screen colors. You can do a lot of this kind of stuff nowadays. They had this back in the original version here, 1.01. So now we have more of a black and white interface. Oh gosh, that dithering is killing me. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Oh, that's bad. Now, the color depth in the system was rather limited. That's why we're getting this dithering. I'm trying to actually get it back where it looks a little bit neater than all these uh, little dots all over the place. The card file was kind of like our modern day contacts app or like an address book app. That's pretty much what this was. So I could have like uh, Gordon Freeman. He lives at 1337 Disk Drive, Hopkins, Minnesota. Uh, this will be uh, Wallace Breen, uh, City 17. You get the idea. So the card file was kind of like a Rolodex, I guess you could say. So I could actually save all these. I'm just saving them in the root. Again, I could make a separate directory for all that. Win.ini, now this is an interesting one. This is where the settings were essentially saved to. So you can see, this is all represented by text, file extensions, color information. The win.ini file was basically all of your personalized settings. As you can see, there's even printer stuff right there. Font information, it's all saved into here. Oh, the clock. Yes, we got to look at the clock. Look at that beautiful clock. Steve Ballmer made sure that existed. Yeah, uh, the system wasn't as clean as it is nowadays with the awesome little clock in the taskbar and all that. Yep, the clock was a separate app. But again, there were multitasking capabilities, so I could actually snap that and just 
like resize this using the little button here. And I could just have a clock running up there while I look at other things. And I could just do my calendar work here. Meeting with Pizza Guy. Oh yeah. And I have my clock running up there. And I could just switch back to my MS-DOS executive whenever I want. I can double click it to maximize certain things and minimize. Kind of like what we can do today. Double clicking the top bar to maximize I believe is what it does. Back in this system it did minimizing. And we just get our little icons down here. So that is a quick demo of Windows 1.01 from 1985. Yeah, be grateful. We've come a long way, haven't we? <laughs> All right, so as I mentioned before, this is one way we can shut down the software here. We can use the special menu, hit end session. It will confirm, and then we hit OK. I have a calendar thing going on. I won't save those changes. And then we're brought back to the default MS-DOS prompt. So thanks for tuning in to this demo of some great old software, and I'll see you in the not-too-distant future.